Evan Patterson's in, Director of Communications at Any One Limited. They push forward businesses in the city centre of Newcastle. I apologise, Sunderland. I hope we haven't annoyed you. But there may be some historians in Sunderland who want to come over and go, ah, oh, I think... Uh, John Coburn is digital coordinator at Tyne and Weir Archives and Museums, which means he has the job of digitising all the stuff that you can see in the museum. So, you they've created this free app, which is called... Hidden Newcastle. And you can find it on uh, iOS. Android is coming, isn't it? Not, not available it is yet? A month, in a month's time. OK. I just want to know... If you haven't got a smartphone, I know I know a lot of people do, how do you access or can you not? You can't currently access those stories. Uh, no. Death to you! <laughs> <laughs> Death to you! Is the short answer. Yeah. OK. You're being elitist, aren't you? <laughs> ah, OK. Uh, so, um, John and Stephen, you're now going to tell us stories. OK. Um, but just, first of all, how do you choose? You just pick the best ones you like, I guess? I think the most interesting stories, definitely, um, but also ones that have got collateral co- that can go with them. So we've got images on the uh, app, there's videos mm. on that app. Mm. Um, oh. So it's things that provide context to the stories as well, so it's not just words. And I think the stories as well, we're, we're quite keen that they're not just the usual histories that we talk about when we talk about Newcastle's past, so that they are quite uh, unusual or, or hidden or forgotten or quirky or uh. pretty... Uh, how far, macabre. How yeah. macabre like. How far back in time do the stories go? The earliest one is from the 1200s, but the, for the most part, they're from sort of mid 1700s onwards. Oh, okay. Up to the 1960s. Okay. Yeah. So for the next uh, two to three minutes, you're going to tell me stories. <laughs> so, the flying donkey at the castle keep. This is a fantastic story. Uh, basically, there was a chap in Newcastle um, who had a had an idea of a flying apparatus. Uh, got to the top of the castle keep. His idea was that he was going to jump off, uh, but then he had second thoughts and thought, uh, how can I test this? So he strapped the wings to a donkey and pushed the donkey off the top of the castle keep. Uh, the do- donkey survived, but only because it landed on a member of the public, <laughs> who subsequently died. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Death by donkey. Yeah. That's yeah. very funny. OK, what year was that in? Ooh. 1733. Okay. Thank you, John. <laughs> the year the River Tyne froze. Yeah, 1814. So from uh, the Red Hue, as it is now, the Red Hue Bridge, all the way to Ooseburn, uh, that froze over th- for three weeks. Um, and people just decided to get onto the ice and have a big party. Um, so uh, skating races, football matches, horses and carriages rode across. Uh, fires were lit and it looked a bit like a country fair. Um, and sports carried on all through the night, particularly when it was a full moon. Um, well, yes, particularly that. That's coming up. Um, the day some bears went shopping in Eldon Square. Uh, yeah, 1954, so three bears were uh, broke free from a temporary cage in Eldon Square and then ran off to Haymarket, Percy Street, Morden Street, and they did actually injure several people. Um, they uh, did? Nobody seriously, so um, somebody did unfortunately receive a little bite in the neck. Um, again, I don't think that was a serious injury, um, uh, but uh, they terrified shoppers um, and they uh, ran on for about an hour uh, before they were... Uh, they were placated by a policeman who had a single sugar lump. Um, got oh. back in their cage and they performed who, that night in Newcastle. Who knew sugar lump? Bam, <laughs> not going to kill you. <laughs> What's the grisliest story? Um, there are a number of grisly stories. Come on, John. Uh, well, the first um, is a guy called Cuckoo Jack, who uh, was, well, real name John Wilson. He was paid by uh, the council, what they called the corporation back then, um, to dredge bodies from the River Tyne. So he was a bargeman, and he would uh, float around the River Tyne picking up bodies that were in the river, um, either had fallen in, maybe drunk, uh, had jumped in, unfortunately, or, or, or were pushed in. Um, and the legend has it that he was were, he was paid per corpse, so he was more inclined to, to pull out a corpse than to uh, rescue a struggling uh, swimmer, hmm. is the legend. Oh, uh, yeah. And Stephen's favourite is, uh, fan- as far as the, the morbid ones are concerned. Yeah, there's a fantastic story uh, on the app um, that has a video piece that goes with it that tells this wonderful story of a, a mortician that was working on a corpse or a corpse, so he thought. Uh, the corpse woke up. Ah! Uh, gave him such a fright uh, that he then uh, proceeded to turn the corpse back into a corpse. <laughs> With a hammer on the head. Yes. 
uh, and he became a corpse. Uh, he was actually executed um, because he got into a fight in the big market. And who was the corpse? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, was. so he was working on the guy who was executed. Yes. So they hadn't executed him well. No. So he woke up actually when he was on the mortician slab. Uh, gave the mortician such a fright that he then uh, obviously took to resolving the situation with a hammer. Oh, my goodness <laughs> me. OK. Um, and um, and um, and your favourite story? Or is that it? That, that's your favourite? Let, let's I, leave I, it. I, that, <laughs> I think we've teased enough, actually. <laughs> it, that, that is fabulous. Uh, new free app, Unearthed Newcastle's weird and wonderful story, uh, history. It's called Hidden Newcastle. It's available now. And um, thank you, John. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Cheers. Well, anything exciting coming up to Christmas? Well, Do you know what? Can I just say, I didn't even know the Christmas market. I had an hour to kill in Eldon Square yesterday, and I didn't realise the Christmas market was on. And then when I went and walked on the pavement, I, I nearly slipped over because it was wet pavements. Yeah. Can you put mats down? <laughs> and um, and the Christmas market's there. Yeah. And well, it's a Christmas light switch on tonight in Newcastle City Centre. And so. I know who's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> my, little fr- my little friend. I think my little friend. Uh, little Friend, little bundle of joy that the little Virgo is, uh, and his friend. Um, so um, they're being switched on tonight at what time? Uh, it's between four thirty and six thirty. Okay, and the Christmas market's going to be there till Christmas. No, ooh, it's here for about another week, I think. Hmm. <laughs> Could you make it longer next year? <laughs> Quite possibly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. BBC Newcastle.